Hi, I'm Kyle Jung, President of TheraClean. To make it easier on you, we're going to walk you through the entire manual as if I bought the TC1000 as well. We're going to walk you through from page one all the way to the end and make it easy and safely as possible to learn how to operate this amazing machine. Let's get started. Intended use, the hazards and warnings. These are here for a reason. Please, please read them. They are also on the safety sticker on the machine. As I said, they are here for a reason. They have been product tested and here for your safety and use. To keep you safe, your customers safe, and the dog safe. Unpacking the contents. If you do not see anything on this page in the box when you open it, please contact us right away as everything in here should check out. Assembly and initial use. Attaching the suction intake and shower cleaning hoses. Let's put the hoses on. First off, let's get you familiar with the hoses. You have one intake suction hose and two cleaning discharge nozzles. The purpose of the suction intake hose is to recirculate the water so it's basically going to always stay submerged and continue to suck in the water so the machine recirculates the water always so it comes out of the discharge nozzles. The two cleaning shower heads are what you are going to clean the dog with. Let's put the hoses on. Insert one washer into the nozzle of the suction intake hose. So again, this is the suction intake hose. As you can see, the white washer is already in there. You should have three backups and three ready to go. So our washer's in there. The white intake matches up on the machine. You put the washer in, give it a couple of turns. It's on there, but at this point, if we started the machine, it will leak. So get your pliers and or wrench out and just a nice little quarter turn is all you need and now it's securely on there. Now let's put on the shower cleaning discharge nozzles. Again, take a washer into each hose, put them in there, and connect them one by one. Lining up, these are the blue tabs. On there, and again, just so we don't have any leakage, want to just a nice little quarter turn. Nothing much, don't tighten it too much, but just so it's on there. Washers in. It's on there. Okay, our hoses are on and attached. Let's see what's next. Prime the pump. Stop. You must prime the pump before initial use. This is a one-time procedure. This is a very, very important step. In order to get the motor to suck in all the water, we have to prime it before initial use. Again, you will never need to do this again unless you are lending it to someone or for resale and you have to dump out all the water. So let's prime the pump. Okay, we're gonna prime the unit. First off, Take your suction hose and your discharge nozzles, all three of them, and put them into the water. Then, what you're gonna need is basically an empty container or a glass. I've got my plastic cup here, and we're gonna fill this up with water and prime the pump. Okay, so before we start priming, we wanna open up the valves in the hose lines so the water can get into the machine and into the tank inside. So what you want to do, when these valves are horizontal like this, that means they are closed and no water is going to go in or out. We want to take the suction hose, turn it so it's vertical. Now it is fully open and all the water can travel inside and into the machine. Take, do the same with your discharge nozzles. Open up all three lines getting ready to prime. So what you've got is your intake nozzle. You want to unscrew the top, set it aside, 
Take your glass or pitcher, put water in it. Now be sure and see if you, you know, you can do your best on getting a direct down position. But slowly start adding water and letting water get inside the pump. If it's quiet, you can actually hear the water going inside there. Now in the manual, it says eight to 10 glasses. Just keep adding water. It's better to be safe than sorry. So just keep adding water until you know for sure that the pump is full. A good indication, knowing that you know you have enough water in there, is when you're adding enough water, the discharge nozzles in the bottom of the water there will start to bubble, meaning the lines are full. Okay, we've primed the pump and we've got enough water in there. Take our cap, make sure the sponge is in there, screw it back in, and put all three nozzles into the water. So as you can see, you've got your two cleaning discharge nozzles in the water, and now your suction hose is back in the water, and you should be ready to go. Okay, we've plugged our unit in. Now what you want to do is check the back, and inside this little tinted window is the circuit breaker. When you look inside, you should see a small little green light. That is indicating that power is good, you're ready to go. If you do not have a green light, then simply unscrew one of these screws, open up the window, and reset the circuit breaker just like we do at home when the power goes out. Let's walk you through the entire front panel. Here's the start and stop button. Well, we all know what that's for. The kill switch on the stop button is there for a reason. Do not be afraid to use it. The pressure gauge. This is your central nervous system to tell you exactly what's going on inside the machine at all times. Now, if you can see, there is a little red marker around the point four. That is where we want to keep the needle as close as possible to it. Yes, it will jump back and forth a little bit, and we're going to show you how to control the needle, but when you do have it at point four, try and keep it there at all times. Over here is your air intake hose. We'll get into that later and why that's there. You don't really need to know that just yet. Of course, your discharge port, both of them, and the white intake for the suction hose. Well, we've already connected those, so we know what those are for. The valves are to open and close the lines. We've done that. And last, the adjustment screw. This is one of the most important features of your TC-1000. The adjustment screw lets air in and out to basically take the bubbles and make them into micro bubbles. Now when we start here, we've just primed the unit. What we want to do is basically have the adjustment screw turned all the way or as close as possible to the left. There are two features on the adjustment screw. This back silver screw, as you can see that I'm turning right now, is the locking mechanism. No different than you want to when we put the wrenches on here and locked it in. The small part on the front adjusts for the needle on the pressure gauge. And when we start the TC-1000, I'm going to show you how to control it. So, we've got both screws out front, the locking neck mechanism is out, and the adjustment screw is turned to the left. We're going to hit start. As you can see, the needle is trying to get up there. We want to get it to the point four, so let's let some air in. Let's start turning it to the right. Here it goes. We've let air in, and we're right around where we want to be. So once we've got it to where we want to be, now we're going to take the back screw and lock it in. You can see here, if we don't like it, let's let a little bit more air in. We'll get it up to that red mark. There we go. So now let's pan up and look at our bubbles to see if we're making micro bubbles. The water is a nice milky white, so yes we are. We've got our suction hose that always remains submerged. Once this comes out of the water, 
you are going to lose absolutely all pressure and we will have to stop. Here are your two discharge nozzles. We've got them making nice, white, milky micro bubbles. The next page in your manual is checking the bubble quality. This is very important to start your day off. Whether you're first time ever using the TC-1000 or just a regular day coming in to make sure that we have perfect size and density of micro bubbles. Let's check the bubble quality now. Make sure to check the bubble quality every day before starting to use your TC-1000 without the bath powder. We'll get into the bath powder in a minute, but let's check the bubble quality. Turn on your TC-1000. Make sure the pressure gauge goes up to where we want it to be at the point or, or around it. Take your transparent glass because you're going to need to actually see the bubbles this way. Get one of your cleaning discharge nozzles. You don't have to fill up the glass, but do as close as possible. So as you can see, we've got a nice white milky quality. When you start filling the glass up, Start your clock at 90 seconds, as it says in the manual. Okay, so as I said, we want to have a minimum of 90 seconds for the bubbles to clear all the way to the top and the brim of what you filled up. As you can see, it's starting to clear now already. We are a good 50 seconds in, and we've still got plenty of time for the bubbles to get to the top. So we, knew, we do know that this one is making good bubbles. Do that for both discharge nozzles. When you're done with this one, pour it out, take your other nozzle, and make sure it's making the exact same density and size of bubbles. So here we are, we got a nice milky white as you can see. You can't even see my hand behind it. It's great. Good, good micro bubbles. And you've already started your clock and you can just wait, wait, wait until you will slowly see the bottom start to go clear again, just like drinking water. And it will go all the way to the top. As long as it's 90 seconds or more, you're good to go. Okay, the bubble quality is good. Let's see what's next. Preparation for use, bathing in animal. Fill a suitably sized tub or basin so that the animal being cleaned can stand comfortably and the water just covers the abdomen. What we mean by this is every groomer or veterinarian has one of these tubs. Now to fill this would take a small lake and we don't want to waste any more water than we have to. What we recommend depending on the size of dog that you're about to have, get yourself two or three reasonably sized rubber mains. This one here is good for a medium sized dog Obviously for a small dog, you don't need a big one, but you can still use the medium one. For a large dog, then get the biggest one that you know that they will fit into. Depending on the skin condition and what we're gonna to treat today, even if it's a dog that doesn't have a skin condition, of course, always give them a micro bubble and work it into your program at your salon. As you can see, we've got our Rubbermaid here. This is good for about a medium to larger size dog, but also you can obviously put a small dog in. We haven't filled it to the brim. We've just done about half the water level. Of course, always to make sure that the suction nozzle is always underwater. We do have the little suction cups here to have them to the side of the uh, tub if you wish, so that it, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, once we have our water in, we have good bubbles. We're all connected and ready to go. Let's talk about the enzyme pouch. We have our enzymes. This is one of the keys to having great success into dislodging all the debris and built up sebum, edema, dirt, and whatever else is lodged inside the skin of the dogs. Take your enzyme powder and your measuring cup that comes with it and sprinkle it into the tub. Now this is best to do before the dog is in the tub. After that, you can do either one or two scoops, it's totally up to you. Turn the machine on and have the bubbles disperse the enzymes all around the tub. 
make sure they get everything. The bubbles alone will do the job, obviously, but mixed in with the enzyme powder, they will work wonders, not only leaving the coat smelling nice and fresh, but helping to dislodge all the debris stuck inside the skin that you and I cannot see with our own eyes. The two working together, you will see the results that you want to get. Cleaning after special skin conditions. Okay, this is a very important feature. We've just got done cleaning a dog that had a skin condition. Now we're moving on to another dog. Whether they have a skin condition or not on the next dog, we don't want to transfer any bacteria that is stuck inside the machine or the hoses from the first dog that we just cleaned onto the next dog. So now we're going to show you how to clean out the inside of the machine with your Proxigar Plus and or a cell. This is your Proxigar Plus. It's basically an accelerated version of hydrogen peroxide. What you want to do is follow along in the manual. Take four or five capsules. So we'll just do four. Get yourself a bucket. You're going to need this. Take all three nozzles both discharge and the suction nozzle into the bucket. Again, make sure that they are submerged, especially the suction hose. This is going to clean out the unit. Now you don't have to fill it completely, but make sure it's got enough water in there. As you can see from the bubbles in here, those are macro bubbles, then it's the hydrogen peroxide is in there and we're going to clean the inside. Now, Back to your air hose here. Remember how we talked about the front of the uh, machine? This hose is going to dislodge a little bit of foam. This is exactly what we want. It's meaning that the hydrogen peroxide is going to go through every single valve and gauge inside the machine and come out here. Fall along. Fill a clean bucket with hot water, we've done that. Put both suction and discharge nozzles in the bucket, you've done that. Add five capsules of Proxigard Plus and or SL, we've done that. Turn on the TheraClean TC1000 and let machine run for two to three minutes. Let's turn it on and we'll see what's going on inside the bucket. What's happening now is the suction nozzle is intaking the hydrogen peroxide water and putting it all through the machine, including, including inside the discharge nozzles. We're getting rid of all that bacteria that we just got off that one dog so we don't transfer it to another dog. Remember to watch your watch for letting it run for two to three minutes. Okay, it's been two to three minutes. Let's turn off the machine. We've turned it off. As you can hear the air hose here, we've got a little bit of foam discharge. And that's normal. Now, empty the bucket of water. Let's do that. Now look at the foam we have going on in here. All the nozzles are all foamy, and especially the bucket. We don't want to put that back into our clean water. So, again, rinse off the hoses. Get all the lines out of there. So we don't have any peroxigard or cell going to the next bucket. Take our bucket, dump it out. Now we really have to rinse this. Get it all, all out of there. Make sure you give it a really good rinse. Okay, we've rinsed off all the hoses and we've rinsed out the bucket. Now we're filling it up with cold water just like it says in the instructions. Uh -huh. 
got the cold water in there. Okay, the Proxigar and Orcel has now been inside the unit. Now let's get it out of there. Get your bucket again after we've done rinsing it. Put only the suction nozzle in. Now this is where it gets tricky. Your discharge nozzles are going to hang outside the bucket. We're basically going to clean all the lines in there. But if we turn on the machine now, it'll take about maybe 10 or 15 seconds to suck in all this water and then we're going to go dry and you're going to ruin the motor. So with this procedure, you're going to need running water. Not for very long, but just for a bit. So we'll continue to one water. Press start. Okay, so we've got it going. Remember, we have running water at all times. Our discharge nozzles are outside the bucket. And the only thing that's in the bucket is the intake nozzle. Let this do this for about three to five minutes. So you want to make sure, why that long, you want to make sure that all of the Proxigar or itself is flushed out of all the units, especially the hoses. Again, you're going to have a little bit of discharge. And that's totally normal. Okay, end of each week. Now we're going to use the Technoclean. This is basically a chemical that's going to clean out the system of all the dirt and grime that's lodged inside the pipes. It doesn't have anything to do with transferring bacteria or anything. That's for the Proxigard and or a cell. This is the Technoclean basically is going to help the longevity of your unit and the investment you've made inside of it. No different than changing the oil on your car. So you can do this at the end of every day or we recommend at the end of every week depending on how busy your salon is. Let's do that now. Okay, just like before, we've got a bucket filled up. All three nozzles are in again. We've got your Technoclean. Add two cap folks. Again, all three nozzles are in there. Start the TC-1000. And then we'll go foamy again. Now what we're doing here, as we explained before, is cleaning out the inside of the unit. So all the dirt and grime, just like the engine of your car, we can make sure that it's running properly every week. Okay. It's been 30 seconds. That's how long it says in the manual to let the Technoclean be in the water. And let's rinse it out again the exact same way. Take all three nozzles out, as you can see. They're all full of the Technoclean, nice and foamy. The front air hose is going to dislodge a little bit of foam on the front of the unit. So have something there. It's not going to be much, but have something there to catch it. Rinse off the nozzles. So we don't get that chemical back into the water we're going to use next. And then change the water on your bucket. As you can see, it's full of the technical. Let's rinse it out. So here we've got that thing that's gonna clean in today. The importance in the safety manual is one of them with a ventilated mask. Now, if you're someone like me who is asthmatic and allergic to dogs, you should wear this because the micro bottle actually releases dander out of the dog and into the air. So anybody in your salon that has respiratory problems is going to be affected. Then it's always drop in the micro bottle. Well, there's two ways to do it. You can have both discharge nozzles in the water, depending on the circumstances of the dog. If you have a dog that cannot be taught to completely not abrasive, then we want to fill the water up to the neck level so that you don't have to touch the dog at all and let the microphone do your full work. My favorite is having one of the nozzles underneath the water at all times so the micro bubbles can get on the azimuth and down in the legs of the You otherwise, you just want to shower the dog all over it and make sure the micro bubbles get everywhere. 
A typical three minutes is about 15 minutes long. The third way you can do it is having both nozzles in your hand and just get the extra number on both of them at the same time. So as you can see, let's we'll take the one underneath and the one on top. The little bend in here that we have been at about a mile. So we have two points in the skin that help the ground. Remember to always put your test and the details to come out and make sure it's running at point four. That is a good boy. So if I said, you can get the double phone door. Now the dog can drink the water all they want. It's just plain water and the insides are in there, so they're perfectly safe. And as we said before, make sure the bubbles get everywhere. Again, it's one day, it's one day, it's one day. Okay, so as we said, the typical treatment is about 15 minutes. All you have to do is just make sure you shower everywhere. Just like when you and I take a shower, just make sure the water gets in the room. And the bubbles will do the best for you. You will slightly see a notice of a change in the water here. So more and more air and dirt and grime that's been a lot in the skin will now fall into the water. So the situation falls apart. And as we said, if you don't have a dog, they cannot be touched. The skin is sort of damaged that way. Just have both dogs with it, but make sure the water level is up to the neck. So the whole dog is submerged. And that way you can just make sure that you don't take the top and you do not have to do anything to cover it and do it on the other. It's not like that. It's not like that. So Bentley's done and his skin is all clean now. As you can see, there's a lot of hair in the water. The, um, the micro bubble does actually reduce shedding. So all that loose hair and dirt and buildup is now inside the water and he, he is running around like a half boy. All clean and his skin is good. Before each use and checking bubble pulp. So before each day, Bates is gonna come in for about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, and make sure the machine's running properly. Let's check that now. So we've got our bucket, just a little bit of water in there, we have our discharge nozzles out of the bucket, and we're just gonna make sure it's running okay. And clear out all the water from yesterday. And for our pressure gauge to get up there, get some pressure. There it goes. Bubbles. And remember to always have water going in while we're doing this because it's going to set this up. Okay. So we're going to get Okay, cleaning the sponge filter. Let's clean the filters. So when you've done a dog, you want to make sure that no hair is lodged inside here, especially this guy. You take the sponge here, as you can see the hairs from Bentley in there. You don't have to worry so much in here, but just take some water and rinse it out. Because the more and more hair that's going to get stuck past this, it's going to get stuck and lodged inside the machine, and we don't want that. So when you're done, see if you can just Pick out some of the hairs and always make sure that this sponge looks good and debris free. Put it back in. Actually, we'll put it in the cap. Like that. 
and we're done with that. Now with the cleaning nozzles, it's a little bit trickier. This end screw comes off like this. And here are your mesh filters. Now, over time with the mesh filters, there'll be little pieces of hair. <laughs> We're paying attention to you, buddy. Hang on. <laughs> over time, there'll be little pieces of hair in the mesh filters and dead skin. What you want to do is the same as the sponge filter, just basically give it a good rinse and make sure all that dead skin and hair is lodged out of there. To put it back in, simply place it in like this, just like in the manual. Yes, buddy. That. And you want to screw the top on. Okay, we're done for the day. We've cleaned all the dogs we had for the schedule. And now we just want to shut all the valves off so no water gets in or out. Remember to turn these back on the next day so they're open. On position is their vertical, the off position horizontal, east and west. So now we're done. We've cleaned all the filters. We've cleaned the machine inside and out to make sure all the bacteria is gone and we're done for the day and ready for tomorrow. That about wraps it up. We've gone through the manual from front to back. If you have any other questions, please contact us at one 855 we And thanks again for purchasing the TC1000 and getting dogs and their skin clean and keeping them that way.